Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at using Adobe Flash to create this spotlight effect revealing a name, like so. Obviously, this will be your own name and you can choose the color that's in the background, but we're going to go through that process of making it now. Now, remember, at any point through this video, you can stop, pause, rewind, whatever you want to do, because it's just a video. But we're going to get started now by going into Flash. So if you go to the Start menu, and we're going to go to All Programs, Software, and we're going to go to Art and Design, and find the Adobe Design and Web Premium folder. Now inside here, we've got Adobe Flash Professional CS6. So it's in the same folder as Fireworks, but we're going to be opening Flash today. So we're going to open Flash, and you should see this loading screen here. Now it may take a little while to load, but that's not uh, that's not too long to wait. So when it does eventually load up, you will be presented with this screen here. Now we've got a few different options. However, the one that we're concerned with today is going to create a new document, which is ActionScript 3.0. So we'll click on that option there. And what we've got now is the Flash interface. So the very, very first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go up to this option here along the top bar and click on where it says Essentials. And you can see because there's a little arrow there, it means there's a drop down menu. So these are the options we have here and we're going to choose the classic option. Um, there's many different choices you can have here as you can see and people can customize their interface to look however they want but just to make sure we've all got the same layout for the purposes this, of this video you're going to choose classic let's just get rid of that a second so we're going to go to essentials and choose classic mode and it changes like this so what we've got now, as you may remember from Fireworks, it's a reasonably similar interface, but with some different options here. We've got our toolbar on the left-hand side where we can draw shapes, we can use the brush tool, we can add text, we can change the fill options, we can erase and zoom and all of those sorts of tools. But there's not that many with, that we're gonna use today, but I'm gonna introduce you now to the stage which is this section here. So the gray area is just uh, the background of the screen and this, the white area here, which you can't change the color of, is the important part that we need to do all of our work on. So anything that's not in this white area, so say you have a shape here which overlaps onto the gray, only the part that's on the white area of the screen will actually be shown in the final document. So I'll show you an example of this. If I just draw a rectangle tool here, I'll change the color of that just so that you can see more clearly. I'll change that to red. And if I now export it as it would look when I do finish the project, you can see that only this part of the red, tri uh, the red rectangle sorry, is shown. So then, let's have a look at getting started. So one of the first things that we're going to do now is we are going to create our text and this is going to be your name. So over on the left hand side on the toolbar is the text tool. And what we're going to do is just click, don't click and drag like you would in Microsoft, just click and it inserts a cursor ready for you to actually start typing your text. So I'm going to type my surname, obviously you can type your first name or if you're working in a pair you can put both of your names. And what you see here now is that I typed it. Okay, I'll just go through that again. Just click on the text and you can see that I've selected it because it's got this blue box around it. And I'm going to press the delete key, not the backspace key, but the delete key. And it goes. So if I get the text tool again, click somewhere in the center. Okay, and I'm going to type Creswell. And the best way for me now to select it and get out of the actual cursor mode where I can keep typing is to go to this tool up here, which is called the selection tool. So once I've clicked that, you can see that the blue box is around the text again. 
And what I can do now that I've got the selection tool um, selected is that I can actually, if you see I hover over the, uh, over the text, you can see the move tool appears or the move icon. So I can click and drag and move that to wherever I want. So you just click and hold and drag it to wherever you want. But we're going to put it in the center. There we are. That's roughly in the center of my stage. So then, remember with your stage now, when this is finished, this will be directly in the middle of your stage, as we can see here. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to change the properties of this particular piece of text. Now it's quite important, remember with this video, that if you need to complete this task, don't just watch the video the whole way through and try and recreate it. Actually pause it every time something's done and then perform the task for yourself. So there we are. What I have now is I've selected using the selection tool in the top of my toolbar by clicking on it like that. Anywhere along it, I can click and it will select the whole object. Now, what you might notice is watch this panel here at the moment, which has my stage properties. Okay, so if I wanted to change the color of my stage, I could, that's no problem. Um, I might keep it as black actually for the time being. Um, so watch the properties here. So this is the properties panel. When I select the text, the properties panel changes because now rather than the properties of the stage changing I've got the properties of my text so what I can do is actually change the size and you can click on it and actually type in a size so I could type 25 and obviously it'll get smaller or as you can see the cursor changes as I go over the size options and it becomes a hand tool with a double-ended arrow and what I can do is click and drag left to decrease the size or click and hold and drag right to increase it to its maximum size of 96. Then as well, I can change the color if I like. I can change it to anything I want. So when you click the color option, you get this palette of many, many different variable colors. So I'm gonna keep mine as, uh, I'll keep it as white for now because it contrasts well with the back. So I'll select the white color again. Okay then. So what we're ready to do now, and remember, you can pause this video if you need to go back and do any of those steps, that's fine. But what I'm going to do now is add something called a filter to this, because I want it to have a nice glowing red effect around the outside. And all I do for this is if you have a look down at the bottom of your properties palette, as long as your text is selected, you've got filters. And this little arrow here pointing to the right means that there's other options beneath it. So if I click on that, you can see that I get this area here. Now, to add a new filter, I go down to this little icon here called Add Filter. And I click on that, and I've got a few options here. Now, the one that we're going to go for, I can explain these in more detail, but we'll do that in a later lesson. We're just going to go for the glow effect today. So if I click on glow, now I can choose the color of my glow to be whatever I like. So I could have a blue glow. I could have a yellow glow. And as you can see at the moment, it's not actually very clear. There's a very faint sort of outline of a yellow glow, but I can change that as well. So then, what we've got here, let's change this to a nice light color blue. That's my favorite color. So let's go to, first of all to the blur X and the blur Y. And what this does is it increases the blur across the X axis and the Y axis. Imagine there's axes there. So I'm gonna drag that out like we did with the size of the text. Drag it out to the right and as you can see, it's increasing and increasing like so but it's still not very clear, so I want it to be a bit stronger, so I could change the strength as well, like that, and you can see that it's increasing. That's getting better, I like that. But there's, that's roughly what I want. I don't want too much glow around it. I don't want it to be getting to the edges of the stage. But what I can also do now is I can change the quality of it. So I can have it as medium. As you can see like that, it makes it even more of a distinct glow. So if I change it to high, you can see that it, it may actually look like it's 
decrease in which you'd think would be less quality but actually the quality of the glow means that it does get stronger and fade out gradually to the edges so I'm going to keep mine as medium I think that looks better to me and then again you can change or you can play around with these here to make it look as you want that's totally up to you so then I'm going to drop that down a little bit and keep it like that okay then so what I've got now is a nice blue uh, sort of like an electric blue glow around the outside which I really like so what I'm going to do now is I think well the glow here will keep the text because it glows around each letter it will keep it looking quite distinct so I'm going to actually go down to this option here which is called knockout and if I press knockout what it's going to do is knock out the actual fill color of the text that's inside the glow so if I press knockout like that you can see that actually what you can see behind is the black canvas but I've got this really nice blue glow around it so I'm going to keep that as it is and that's essentially my text done so remember you can pause rewind go over any of these elements of the task that you're unsure of and you can complete those accordingly so then we've now got the text what we need remember is our sort of spotlight effect so this won't be present on the stage at the beginning but the spotlight will actually reveal that text so then what we're going to do now is we're going to go to our timeline and our timeline is useful for animation because let's imagine okay that each one of these frames here is like part of a picture but um, of a flip book so a flip book we all know that you put an image on the first page you change the image slightly on the second page change it slightly on the third and then when you flick it it actually gives it the effect that it's moving so we're going to do something similar here so we're going to be working with layers so on this layer here I'm going to change the name just by if I click off it double click on the layer name and I'm going to call it name so I know that this is the layer with my name on then what we're going to do is we're going to add a new layer and we do that by going to this option here on the layers palette so I go down here and I click on new layer so it's called layer 2 because that's the default that it sets it as but I'm going to call this mask so now we have our mask layer so you can see on the first frame if I click here there's a little black dot on frame one which is called a keyframe and this means with the black dot that there's actually something present on the stage at this time in this frame if I click onto the mask layer on frame one there is a keyframe but it's white and that means that there's nothing currently on the stage so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my toolbar and I'm going to choose from my options here on the shape tool I've got a rectangle which is there at the moment and if I look in the bottom right corner you can see there's a little black triangle which means that there's options underneath it so I click and hold and now you can see I've got other shape tools so I'm going to go to the oval tool So what we're going to do now that we've got our oval tool selected and the oval tool is just used to make circles as well um, is we're going to create a circle in this mask layer here. So make sure you've clicked on frame one of your timeline but make sure you've done that on the mask layer. And what we're going to do to draw a perfect circle is hold the shift key when we click and drag the shape out. Now what we're going to do is drag it or create the circle so that it's actually off the stage at the moment and we're going to make we're going to make it animate to go all the way across to this side on its own so what we do we hold the shift key and we need to make sure that the circle is bigger or is big enough to cover this whole area here so I'm going to click and drag out and that looks about right to me so as you can see it's a perfect circle because I've held shift when I dragged it out and I'm going to let go now in this particular instance with the task that we're doing we don't really need to change anything about this particular shape here 
So what we're going to do, we've got this shape here and I can select it again. Um, and what I'm going to do now is go to frame 24. Now if you look here where it says 24 FPS, that's the frame rate. And it means that it's playing when it's finished at 24 frames per second. And remember these are frames here. So it will take one second to play 24 frames of my animation. So people often get confused. They think that each one of these frames represents a second. However, it doesn't. This represents a second in this area here. So what I'm going to do now is insert a second keyframe here. Okay, like this one, 24 frames. I'm going to do that at 24 frames per second and insert keyframe. So now, if we see the playhead, this is just what show, this just shows us how long it takes to play. So if I press enter on the keyboard, you can see that it plays for one second. And that's 24 frames. So what you can see happens now when the playhead moves is that the text disappears. And this is because this keyframe is only in frame one. So if I drag the playhead, it disappears as soon as it goes onto frame two. So what I'm going to do to make sure that this stays the same all the way to here is I'm going to right click and insert a keyframe. So it duplicates here exactly what's in this keyframe there and then fills in the rest of the frames automatically. So what I've got now is an animation where I've got a circle which stays where it is and my text which stays where it is. However, I want this circle to move across to this side here on its own. So what I'm going to do in this keyframe here, if I click on this keyframe, it'll select my shape here. And I'm going to move it, try and keep your mouse steady as it goes along. can be quite difficult, but as long as it's roughly in the same sort of line, that's fine. So click it there. And now what you'll see is that when I move the timeline or the playhead, you can see that the circle stays where it is, stays where it is, stays where it is, and then when it gets to one second, it moves to the other side. However, I want it to move across the stage on its own and gradually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click anywhere in the middle here. It doesn't matter where you click, but as long as you click in between these two black keyframes here. So I'm going to click in the middle just to be safe, and I'm going to create a classic tween. And what you'll see is now, if I drag the playhead to the beginning, it's filled in the middle spaces. Or the middle frames, I should say, like that. But at the moment, it doesn't look very good because this particular shape just covers the actual text here. Whereas I want it to reveal it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask this layer so it will put a mask that totally covers all of this name layer here but when the shape moves over it it reveals the name so all I have to do is simply right click on mask and I go down to the option here which is mask and you can see that everything here has disappeared but if I press enter the shape now when it goes over the text reveals it like so and that's essentially all you have to do. So if I press control on the keyboard and enter at the same time, it's going to export my movie to show what it looks like. And there you have your flash animation, which uses layers, keyframes, a tween, and is a really, really nice effect. So as usual, go to file, save as, and you're going to want to create um, an animation folder inside your ICT folder so that we know how to access it next time.